subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Sunday's annular solar eclipse was observable from parts of northern India, while the rest of the country saw a partial solar eclipse. What causes the annular eclipse? Why was Sunday's eclipse specifically so special? And why is it extremely dangerous to stare at the sun directly during an eclipse? We'll answer these questions and more in this edition of Pure Science with me, Sandhya Ramesh. Solar eclipses occur when the moon comes in between the Earth and the sun. The moon revolves around the Earth in an elliptical orbit, not a perfectly circular one. In fact, it's very hard to find perfectly circular orbits in the solar system. Because the moon moves in an elliptical path, it comes close to the Earth at some point and then moves farther away. These points are called the perigee and apogee respectively. During an annular eclipse, the moon is farthest from the Earth and thus appears relatively smaller than when it is closer. When it is much closer, it's relatively bigger and blocks out the whole sun, causing a total eclipse. Because it's farther away, it leaves out an outer ring of the sun visible, which is the annular eclipse. Observing the annular eclipse also depends on the angle at which an observer on Earth is looking at the sun as well. The annular eclipse is especially beautiful and people often refer to it as the ring of fire. One of the most astounding facts about our existence today is that we are at this perfectly serendipitous moment in time to observe both total and annular solar eclipses. The moon has been steadily moving away from Earth since its formation as it stabilizes in its orbit. So before our current time period several thousand to millions of years ago, there were no annular eclipses, only total eclipses because the moon was much closer to us than it is now. In the future, thousands to millions of years from now, there will not be any more total eclipses, only annular because the moon will never be as close as it is today. Sunday's annular eclipse was particularly rare because it occurred on June 21, which was also the annual June solstice or the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. On this day, which typically falls either on June 20 or 21 each year, the Earth's North Pole is tilted at its maximum towards the Sun in the Northern Hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere also sees its longest day of the year on June solstice and the Arctic Circle sees continuous daylight through midnight. The Sun is also at its highest elevation in the sky. The Southern Hemisphere sees its longest night. The summer solstice occurs for the southern hemisphere during December solstice which occurs on December 21 or 22 each year and is also called the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere. Winter solstice in both hemispheres is the longest night of the year. The poles will not see the sun over the horizon during the day at all and thus will see 24 hours of night or what is called the polar night. Eclipses don't always coincide with a solstice and in fact both lunar and solar eclipses do not happen with as much regularity as we would intuitively think that they should. We know exactly how long it takes for the moon to go around the earth and yet we do not have a lunar eclipse every single month. This is because the moon orbits the earth at an angle to the plane on which the earth orbits the sun. So it's only when the three line up perfectly, which doesn't happen with regularity each month, that we see an eclipse. Now, while lunar eclipses are safe to observe with our naked eyes, solar eclipses are not. They are highly dangerous. It's not because of something unusual that happens during a solar eclipse. It's just that the partial or total blocking of the sun makes it easier for our eyes to observe the sun for longer periods of time, making them susceptible to damage from ultraviolet radiation. UV radiation is emitted in the same quantity whether there's an eclipse or not, but the sun's brightness typically does not allow us to look at it directly for more than a split second. During an eclipse, however, we can comfortably stare at the sun for a longer period of time while the sun comfortably damages our retinas without our knowledge. Because our retina lacks pain receptors, we don't sense when the burning occurs. UV light floods the retina behind our pupils and the exposed tissue gets burnt. In the short term, a sunburn of the cornea can occur known as solar keratitis. 
The UVB rays burn the cornea's outer cells. This results in sensitivity and pain for a few days. But serious damage occurs in the form of a hole in the retinal tissues called solar retinopathy. The sun's UVA rays cause damage to our macula and retina. It results in the destruction of rods and cones, the cells that our eyes used to see during the night and day or to detect colors, resulting in a blind spot in our direct central vision called scotoma. We already have a natural blind spot right in front of us called the blind point. All vertebrates do except for cephalopods, which are the octopus and squid family. You can experimentally verify the blind point by closing one eye, keeping a pencil or a piece of paper with a mark on it in front of the closed eye and then looking at it through the other eye and then moving it away and towards you. At one point, which for me is about 40 centimeters from my eyes, the pencil or the spot will disappear. There are many sites online where you can do blind spot tests. And this occurs because there aren't enough light detecting cells on the retina that visually sees this particular region in front of us. The other eye and mainly our brains make up for this lack of information by filling in information using surrounding visuals. But when a person stares directly at the sun, even if it is just for a few seconds, the UV light burns the retina, creating a larger blind spot right in front of our eyes and thus often permanently damaging our vision. Observing the sun directly or through telescopes or binoculars during a solar eclipse is very dangerous and could even lead to blindness. Using an x-ray film or just sunglasses is also not safe enough as they don't fully filter out the UV radiation reaching the eyes. Pointing cameras directly at an eclipse is also to be avoided unless equipped with proper solar filters. The only way to see an eclipse or the sun directly, safely, is through special filter material. These are often sold as solar eclipse glasses or goggles and they are usually nearly 100,000 times darker than regular sunglasses and made of a material called black polymer. Black polymer is a resin that's infused with carbon and it blocks all UV light and almost all visible light. When viewing through black polymer, you can't see the surrounding sky or pretty much anything else, but you can see the sun clearly. Similar solar filters are available for cameras and telescopes as well. All solar telescopes have these filters and this blocks out so much visible light that you can even see dark sunspots and other solar activity on the surface of the sun. Big telescope manufacturers also sell aluminium coated mylar filter sheets that can fit over telescopes. Glasses used by welders are also safe for the eyes as the reason to not stare at a welding flame is essentially the same. Perhaps the safest method to observe the eclipse is through a pinhole projection. If you create a small hole about 3 mm radius in a cardboard paper or a thick sheet such as watercolor paper, you can face away from the sun, hold it up so that the sun's rays can fall through the hole onto a wall or another sheet of paper. This effectively functions as a pinhole camera and essentially light streams the sun onto your wall. Lastly, anytime an eclipse occurs, myths float around on social media and even news media about dangers of stepping out or eating food or cooking or undertaking important events. These are simply superstitions and misconceptions and are not rooted in any science and have no bearing on reality. Traveling during non-COVID times, starting new projects, wearing jewelry, cooking and consuming food, etc. is perfectly safe during an eclipse. The eclipse also has no effect on the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. It will neither affect the virus, nor did it cause the pandemic, contrary to many statements being made by astrologers in the media. That brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video and you like our other science or political coverage, please consider contributing to us at theprint.in contribute. The link will also be in the description below. And thank you for watching.